Hello. Hi, Rents and Smarns. Hey. Hi, how are you? Okay. Oh. Shoot, it was nice out there today, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, 75 here in Virginia. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was nice and silly. <laughs> oh, what can you tell people about um, Ryan? Uh, would he um, help a person in need? Uh, he would help anybody in need. He would give his last penny to help somebody get something to eat. He would he would stop doing whatever he was doing if somebody needed help with packages. He was just he was a good, lovable kid. Like everybody liked him that knew him um, from the time he was little. How did you um, know Ryan was um, shot? And, um, was there my a- cousin? Had, my cousin had called me at work, and she had said um, she didn't want to tell me at first, and she just said, "You need to call home. Uh, it's an emergency. I don't know what it is, but you need to call home." And then she hung up real quick, and I was like, "No." I called her back. I was like, "You need to tell me what's going on." And she was like, one of your sons were shot. I don't know which one, and I don't know how bad. And in that moment, I started calculating where my sons are. And I knew two were supposed to be different places. And it was only Ryan and my husband home. So through deduction, I just screamed that it was Ryan. And then I totally lost it. What? Was there any um, cameras uh, around in the area? Mm, not any that we found. Oh, okay. Ones did. Ones on the main streets. He was shot on the corner of a small street. Um, one on the main street caught half of the license plate in the car, and then one around the block caught the car going down but couldn't get the license plate. So there was no really. No information there. Um, did uh, Brian um, have any b- bad blood? Uh, well, Ryan had had an argument with a uh, young man and, and over his PlayStation. They were acquaintances, and they hung around their friend's house. And Ryan had brought his PlayStation there a couple weeks prior. And it disappeared, and this kid was the only, he was 23, this guy. And they found out that he was the one that stole Ryan's PlayStation, so they had words about it. And he threatened Ryan. But, you know, Ryan didn't take seriousness of it. And three weeks later, Ryan was shot on the corner of the same, three doors away from the house that the PlayStation was stolen from. Um, and the guy had called the woman that lives in that house and said, you know, that's not what was supposed to happen. They were only supposed to scare him, maybe shoot him in the leg, but they weren't supposed to do that to him. Um, but that's not enough evidence for the police. Uh, he says that the woman misheard him and he didn't say it like that. There's an audio of the guy saying, you know, he called Ryan twice before, but Ryan wouldn't listen. You know, it's just, it's just fragments of everything, so nothing's really sticking. It's mostly like hearsay or something. It's hearsay, but from, from like one person. It's not like, it's a person that, this guy that is one of the suspects talked to. <clears throat> They're telling the police this. But with the Philadelphia DA that's in charge now, this Kratzner, he's not taking weak evidence. He's letting them go with the weak evidence. He's dropping their cases. So the detectives are kind of iffy. They want to cross all their T's and dot all their I's so we don't throw nothing out. And of course, I'm anxious. I want to know who killed my child. I want to want them 
arrested and to pay for what they did. Is there any kind of award for um, anybody that has that? Oh, yeah, there, there is a reward that the city of Philadelphia, for a murder victim, they put up $20,000. And um, my family and friends added another 7500 to that. So there is a reward, $27,500, to anyone leading to an arrest. And that could be anonymous. Do you know the phone number I need? Yes, it would be 215-686-3334, and that's a Detective McAndrews. Right. Well, thanks for letting me do this. Oh, I appreciate it. Any, any means possible that can help.